Hey trackers, there's a pretty interesting story going on here underneath these trees and I will get over there in a minute but I wanted to start right here and show you this cone and that cone scale and this gnawed branch. Let's look a little closer. So I'll start with the branch which is the beginning of the story. Notice that this is a Monterey pine and it's got some cones on there that haven't matured yet but there were mature cones further up on the branch and what happened was the gray squirrel gnawed this branch off the tree and uh, dropped it down to the ground where it could feed on the cones. Now let me focus on this and show you the, the incisor marks. So close up here at the end you can see the uh, parallel marks there from the incisors of the squirrel as it uh, cut this branch off the tree. And it did that to drop it down to the ground so that it could come down and harvest the cone that was on this branch. So let's look closely at that cone next. So here's an individual cone scale and this was gnawed off the cone. You can see again the marks right there on the end where the squirrel used its incisors to cut this from the cone. Okay now I'm behind or uh, below the trees and what you see here on the ground is just a large collection of those cone scales that I showed you that were discarded by the squirrel. So all these cone scales here have been cut off individual cones. The squirrel ate the seeds that were in there that were right here and then dropped these to the ground. So every single one of these that you see all over here was dropped by the squirrel. There's also several other cones over here that were uh, eaten and then dropped down to the ground. So the gray squirrel has a different strategy than the Douglas squirrel which lives here too. And the gray squirrel will pick a branch up there in the tree and sit up there and feed on its cones. It'll drop branches like this, little uh, twigs that have cones on them to go down to the ground and harvest them if they're too uh, far towards the end of the, the branch and won't support the squirrel's weight. That's its strategy to get to the cones. It cuts off the branch, drops it, and then comes down, grabs it, goes back up the tree and feeds. So this squirrel has a perch right up there. See the first branch on the right? That's a pretty sturdy branch. And that one that sticks out in the middle is also a fairly sturdy branch. So the squirrel doesn't have to go very far, but it has those really sturdy perches and it can keep an eye on its surroundings while it's eating. So gray squirrels tend to like these elevated perches for their feeding. And below their favorite trees you often find accumulations like this of discarded cones and branches and cone scales. The Douglas squirrel has a different strategy and I'm going to go over to a log where I found previously Douglas squirrels eating um, fungus and I'll show you that for a comparison. So here's the Douglas squirrel's log and it's been raining so everything's kind of the same color right now it's all wet um, but what you can see here is cone scales from Douglas fir cones which are these small ones and they're scattered all over this log here. There's a whole bunch of these around. These have been eaten and so the Douglas squirrel has a favorite perch and I've watched this squirrel on trail camera and I'll include a couple of videos showing how the squirrel goes down, grabs a mushroom off the ground, brings it up here, feeds on it, then goes over here, gets a cone, comes back and feeds on this log. So it's got a favorite perch that it uses over and over. Their perches tend to be on things like logs, sometimes branches, but they're, they're a little bit less exposed than the perches of the gray squirrel because these little Douglas squirrels are very small. So they are also prey animals, as well as the gray squirrels, but their strategy is kind of to stay a little bit more hidden. And so they have a favorite perch, like this log, that the squirrel can uh, sit on that sits above the ground a little bit, gives it an eye around. And behind it is fairly dense brush, for this area anyway, so nothing's going to sneak up on it from behind. So it's got a, a good perch and it really only needs to monitor this area right here to make sure no predators approach. So there's your uh, Douglas squirrel feeding strategy and uh, how it differs from the gray squirrel.